So, Kurt Zuma, a few weeks back, was caught abusing his cat by kicking his cat across the floor of his mansion, and it stirred up some public outrage, rightfully so. You shouldn't be kicking cats or abusing animals. I made a video about this. There was a bunch of videos made about this. There was a bunch of disgust and hatred hurled at Kurt Zuma for kicking the cat. A bunch of us animal rights activists come out and said, well, you know, a lot of horrible abuse happens in farms and slaughterhouses that people seem to turn a blind eye to, but as soon as it's a companion animal, like a cat or a dog, people freak out. So recently, Kurt Zuma was sentenced in court, and this was his punishment. So it says, the £125,000 a week Defender 27 looked shamefaced as he was told his punishment at Thames Magistrate Court in East London this morning. West Ham Defender Zuma was pilloried after footage emerged of, let's just look at the definition of pilloried. Pilloried, attack or ridicule publicly. Thank you very much, dictionary. I don't know why you'd use that choice of words, but okay. West Ham defender Zuma was pilloried, attacked and ridiculed publicly after footage emerged of him volleying the pet across his kitchen before throwing a pair of shoes at it and slapping its head, saying, I swear, I'll kill it. This language, calling the cat it, it's probably why there's a society that perpetuates violence against animals because you're just objectifying this cat by calling them it. This cat is not an object. This cat is a sentient conscious being and then saying, I swear I'll kill it. It's just objectification of these animals. Even sometimes with companion animals, this does happen. People look at dogs and cats as, you know, just its and objects and there for our own amusement. Speciesism is not just limited to farmed animals. It happens with companion animals as well. The Snapchat clip from February this year featured laughing and disgusted animal lovers and football fans who was filmed by the brother Yone. Zuma pleaded guilty at Thames Magistrate Court in East London last week to two counts of causing unnecessary suffering to a cat after blaming the family pet for damaging a chair. Wow, causing unnecessary Unnecessary suffering to a cat. So you pleaded guilty to it. Okay, just keep that in mind. Unnecessary suffering to a cat. His two Bengal male caps, which can cost up to £1,500 each, have since been signed over to be rehomed by the RSPCA. District Judge Susan Holdham said, both of you took part in this disgraceful and reprehensible act with his pet cat. The cat looked up to you to care for its needs. On that date in February, you did not provide for its needs. You must be aware that others look up to you and many young people aspire to emulate you. Zuma was handed 180 hours of community service and told to pay court costs of nearly £9,000 and has been banned from keeping or caring for cats for five years. Very interesting, isn't it, that Zuma was given 180 hours community service, right? For what I believe to be quite mild abuse in comparison to what happens to pigs, cows, chickens and fish. I'm not saying that the abuse was okay. I'm saying it's bad. But when you put it up against the fishing industry, fish being dragged out of the ocean, suffocating slowly and dying and being scaled completely conscious, or male chicks in the egg industry being macerated in blenders, or pigs in gas chambers, or mutilations in the dairy industry, and castrations and dehorning. Yeah, kicking the cat was bad, and it is animal abuse, and it should be condemned. But when you compare it, for example, to what happened at Byford Slaughterhouse, the family-run, family-owned slaughterhouse that we left a camera in at the knockbox. What that guy did to that cow, grabbed the cow by the face, swore at the cow, vented his frustration on the cow, bolt gunned the cow in the head. The cow was still mooing when the cow got dropped out the other side of the knockbox. The cow was then being decapitated while still flailing around and was reacting to the knife that was being j jabbed into their neck. The cow was still trying to breathe through the hole in their neck, threw the cow's head across the slaughterhouse floor. All of this caught on camera. The footage was sent to the FSA, the Food Standards Agency, who are in charge of the standards in slaughterhouses. The FSA got back and said, what happened in that slaughterhouse was completely legal. Kurt Zuma kicks a cat and was handed 180 hours of community service and told to pay court costs of 9,000 pounds. And what happened to that guy who tortured and killed that cow? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. How is that for a messed up system when it comes to animals? Bang. You kick a cat, you get in trouble. If you're a cow, you can decapitate them and skin them and eat them. That's totally fine. But a cat, if you forcefully tow them across the room, that is is an offence, and you could be looking at prison time. A West Ham club spokesman said, West Ham United wishes to make it clear that we condemn in the strongest terms any form of animal abuse or cruelty. 
This type of behaviour is unacceptable and is not in line with the values of the football club. Well, I'd hope the players at West Ham don't wear leather football boots and don't have bacon sandwiches in the cafeteria and your players and staff don't have bacon and eggs for breakfast. Pigs killed in gas chambers and egg layer hens exploited and killed in gas chambers. So you said of animal abuse or cruelty in any form? Well, you should all be vegan, I guess. Yeah. Are you saying now that you're a vegan club, West Ham? Are you going to change your name to West Veganham United? I hope so. So what happens if people see animal cruelty as kicking a cat? They don't see it as participating in some of the worst suffering and cruelty that exists on planet Earth, which is the meat, dairy, and egg industries. By far, nothing comes close. Fishing industry, by far, nothing comes close. And the way to help you sort of realize that is just imagine everything that happened to the pigs, the cows, and the fish, and the chickens was actually happening to cats. Replace the pigs with cats, replace the chickens in the factory farms with cats, replace the cow in Byford's slaughterhouse with a cat, okay, in your mind, or with a dog, in your mind, do that for me, and then tell me, if that happened to a cat or a dog, would you call that any form of animal abuse or cruelty? If you would, then you should be vegan. Within 48 hours of footage emerging, we find Kurt the maximum available to the club. So they fined Kurt Zuma, I think it was two weeks of pay. He gets 125,000 pounds a week. They find him a quarter of a million pounds. It's not so much for him, but it is quite a lot of money. And what happened to the staff at Byford Slaughterhouse? Nothing. They actually got defended by the industry. They got defended by their little lobbyist spokespeople. The Association of Independent Meat Suppliers came out and defended Byford's for their actions towards a cow. But Kurt Zuma's own football club fined him and condemned him. How is that? How is that for a double standard? It's crazy that if you do even worse things to a farmed animal, it's not considered abuse or cruelty, it's considered completely legal and the food chain. If you do magnitudes of degrees milder cruelty to a cat, you are condemned. If you don't see something wrong with society and the way they view animals, then I don't know what to tell you. After finding Kurt Zuma, they donated every single penny of this money with a number of deserving charities, all dedicated to animal welfare. Maybe it went to the RSPCA, because here is a statement by the RSPCA's Chief Inspectorate Officer, Dermot Murphy. We hope this case will serve as a reminder that all animals deserve to be treated with kindness, compassion, and respect, and that we will not tolerate cruelty by anyone. Well, that's very interesting RSPCA Chief Inspectorate Officer Dermot Murphy because the RSPCA allow thumping on pig farms. If you don't know what thumping is, it's otherwise known as blunt force trauma, and it's a way of euthanizing, that's a euphemism for you, it's a way of killing piglets on farms that have either gotten too sick or not growing fast enough. They grab them by the hind legs and they will smash their head on the pavement or on a brick wall until they are dead. So the RSPCA, you can look up their guidelines, they allow blunt force trauma. So what you're telling me, Dermot Murphy, is the type of cruelty that Kurt Zuma subjected that cat to. You will not tolerate, but the RSPCA are happy to tolerate the thumping of piglets on your pig farms. And you also allow the maceration of male chicks in the egg industry or gas chambers of pigs. And it's scientifically clear that CO2 gas chambers cause immense suffering to pigs. You also have RSPCA assured eggs, and we all know the male chicks are culled, and the spent egg laying hens are put in a gas chamber and eaten. So what Kurt Zuma did to that cat, the cat will live to fight another day, but all of these animal products that you put your stamp of approval on with these acts of cruelty, that should be tolerated and should be bought actually, should be paid for by the consumer. So I don't think the RSPCA should be opening their mouth too soon until they get out of bed with animal agriculture themselves. And finally, it is inherently cruel to rob an animal's life from them. I'm very certain of this. If you took any of the chickens out of the UK egg industry or factory farms and you put them in Kurt Zuma's cat's position, they would trade places with Kurt Zuma's cat in an instant. Chris Burgess, CEO of Blue Cross Pet Charity said, this court case has been a positive move in addressing animal cruelty. Now there's an opportunity for a change as to how animals are treated in the home and an end to them being used as props or exploited for social media engagement. Chris Burgess of Blue Cross Pet, I hope you're a vegan making these statements because if you care about how animals are exploited, most animals in the world by far are exploited for meat, dairy, and eggs. Nothing comes close. And they're not just exploited 
They are treated cruelly. They are tortured, mutilated, and murdered by the billion, by the trillion. People in positions of influence like Zuma Brothers must never underestimate the power they hold in causing others to follow and copy their behaviours. Well, I don't think anyone is in a position to criticise the Zuma Brothers unless they do not participate in the exploitation and cruelty to animals as far as is possible and practicable, unless you're a vegan. Because if you've got a problem with Kurt Zuma kicking a cat and you support the dairy industry where they're raping cows with their fist, mutilating them, stealing their children, killing their children, killing them in a slaughterhouse, then you really should take a look in your own backyard before criticizing Kurt Zuma. I also want to say that before I went vegan, I was that person who would point at an animal abuser and say, look at them abusing that dog, at that cat. If I got my hands on him, mate, I would do exactly to him what he did to that cat. That was me. But I had bacon, steak, eggs, and milk on my plate on the daily. I was a hypocrite too. But I woke up, snapped out of it, and now I'm vegan. It was distressing to witness the cruelty in the video and the laughter that ensued when causing an animal pain. It is of real concern to Blue Cross that social media channels are often where individuals look for a guide to how to treat animals. Pets deserve as much respect as any member of the family. So pets deserve respect as any member of the family. But you know, it's okay to have hunting channels where they're shooting deer. You know, it's okay to have fishing channels where they're ripping fish out of the ocean and they're suffering with a hook in their face, slowly suffocating on the, the deck of a boat. It's fine to have all that on social media. But anyone kicking a cat on social media, it's just horrible. Oh my God. It's just... Absolutely crazy. It says, it's always distressing to know when children have been direct witness to animal cruelty. And we must also remember the indirect impact on the millions of young people who witness other acts of cruelty which are published on social media. Listen, children are being fed the body parts of animals who are tortured and abused in slaughterhouses and factory farms all across the world. Children have no idea about that. Wouldn't they want to know? I would want to know. She's saying that the, to solve this problem, we should not allow any of these cruel acts to be shown on social media so that, what, it all happens in the dark? No one gets to know what happens in a factory farm or a slaughterhouse, or no one gets to see Kurt Zuma kick a cat so we can hold Kurt Zuma accountable. I mean, I don't think hiding this stuff from social media is the answer. I think showing more of this stuff is the answer so we can make a change. Hopefully the prominence of this case can lead to a step change in how social media channels monitor disturbing content more effectively and how influencers use their platforms to promote positive animal welfare messages. Well, I hope that you'll be promoting more of the vegan channels who tell people not to consume animals, which is the main cause of animal cruelty, suffering and death on earth. And there's a little kitten here. Look at this, look at this little cat's face, how cute. By the way, none, none of what I'm saying is to take any of the light away of what Kurt Zuma did to this cat, because obviously that's wrong to kick a cat, but what I'm saying is there's just a huge double standard within society. We need to address where most of the animal cruelty, suffering and killing happens as well, and that is in the meat, dairy and egg industries, fishing industries, by far. All right, we've got 1.4K comments. All of the animal activists will be out on here. I've got to be careful because sometimes these people are vegan, but for the most part, they are not. Prison time would be better. Stats show us if we abuse animals, we can hurt humans too. So yes, stricter laws and time for punishment. And where is the cat now? Oh, the cats are fine, but uh, if you think sh uh, people should be going to prison for, to abuse animals, you should obviously think that the people that work at Byford's should go to prison for decapitating that cow. Should the people who support the animal abuse also go to prison? What, what about the people who pay people to abuse and kill the animals so they can have bacon in their sandwich? Should they be held accountable too? What do you think? A lot of these people in this comment section are probably anti-vegan, which you know I don't get either. Heather says, quite right to, not enough punishment. Okay, not enough punishment for kicking the cat. What do you think should happen to those who participate in animal agriculture? I don't know. It's an open-ended question. Watch Dominion. Look at what happens to animals in these facilities and then tell me what the appropriate punishment for that should be. Angela says he should have been sent to prison for a week. You know, it wasn't good enough. Look at what's legal in so-called civilized countries when it comes to farmed animals and then you'll see our frustration as well when the people who are speaking up against the animal abuse are ridiculed and condemned when it comes to food animals, but as soon as Kurt Zuma kits a cat, everyone cries for justice, which is good, but please, a bit of consistency. Everyone's upset that he got such a low sentence. Everyone's saying bloody disgraceful. It wasn't enough. What is enough for him? I'd do 180 hours for kicking and slapping him. So Jeffrey's saying he'll do the prison time if he gets to bash Kurt Zuma. So people just talking about violence to Kurt Zuma. I don't want to keep repeating myself, but please apply this logic to the animals that are abused and killed in the meat, dairy, and egg industries. Please, like, look at the cruelty Picture if they were dogs and cats. Thomas says he should have got life with no parole for kicking a cat, Thomas. But people are defending Bifords for decapitating cows. So anyways, that's a Kurt Zuma story. 
kicking a cat. People want him in prison for life, which is pretty crazy. Byford's got away completely scot-free with what they did to the cow. I'm going to leave that video for you down below so you can see the difference in treatment between Kurt Zuma's cat and the cows at Byford's and show you what our society defends as completely legal and what our society condemns as one of the biggest moral outrages of the year, kicking Kurt Zuma's cat. So I'm so glad that the cats are safe and sound. The RSPCA do do good work as well, but it's cancelled out, I'm afraid, by them encouraging people to consume animals. You can't do both. Stick to one side. Are you either helping animals or you're encouraging the consumption of animals? Which one is it? Please don't be like Kurt Zuma, but be vegan and don't support industries that are doing far worse than what Kurt Zuma ever did.